So I will now introduce our next speaker, Janina Irani. Uh, before handing the virtual floor over to Janina, I would like to thank her for her flexibility in joining this panel today on a rather short notice. Uh, and this was in place of our dear colleague, Saji Prelis, who sends his apologies for not being able to join us today. So thank you so much, Janina, for, for stepping in to share with us a few words about the youth peace and security agenda. Uh, we know that we, we cannot talk about um, youth voices within the UN without uh, looking at, at the one PS agenda. Uh, Janina is a researcher uh, and a former advocacy intern at the Global Network of Women uh, Peace Builders. Her ongoing topics of research include youth leadership and peace building and humanitarian action, and examining the implementation of the women, peace and security, and youth peace and security agendas and humanitarian action in Southeast Asia. Over to you, Janina. Thank you so much, Lillian, for having me. Um, I like to first begin by acknowledging Earth Day 2022 and the role that youth leadership plays in tackling the climate crisis. Um, so I'll speak very briefly about the YPS agenda, about its importance, its implementation, and what we're doing at GNWP about it as well. Um, since its adoption in December 2015, Security Council Resolution 2250 on YPS has been hailed as a first of its kind to recognize young people as meaningful drivers of change through its explicit encouragement of youth leadership at all levels of conflict prevention and peace building. The YPS agenda has been further strengthened by two additional resolutions in 2019 and 2020. Despite its important normative framework, the Security Council and other global policymaking spaces still remain inaccessible for young people leading peace building and humanitarian action in conflict and crisis affected communities. Language barriers, insecurity, unreliable internet access, as well as limited awareness of existing opportunities inhibit countless young peace builders from being able to share their perspectives, recommendations, experiences, and challenges with key stakeholders. Progress on institutionalizing the YPS agenda is evident, but still limited. In 2021, August, Finland became the first country to launch a national action plan on youth peace and security. Um, it was formulated through in, in inclusive consultations, recognizes targets and prioritizes a dual implementation, both domestic and foreign. As of 2022, Finland and Nigeria have both launched NAPS on YPS, while Colombia, DRC, the Gambia, and Philippines are in the process of doing so. Other countries have also opted to institutionalize the agenda through the launch of national coalitions on YPS. At the regional level, the African Union is also currently developing a continental framework on YPS. Engagement between the youth and UN has also increased with more young activists briefing the UN Security Council and the appointment of youth focal points in 22 active special political missions. A group of champions of YPS was formed in 2017 under the leadership of Jordan and Norway that has helped political buy-in for member states of the YPS agenda. Effective implementation of the YPS agenda requires an investment in youth-led peace building. However, funding for youth organizations remains insufficient with most operating on annual budgets of less than $5,000. A complete transformation of the way in which peace building and gender equality programming is financed is desperately needed. Some encouraging measures are the Peace Building Fund, which invested a total of $57.2 million through the Youth Promotion Initiative between 2016 and 2019. A global YPS fund was also launched by Search for Common Ground and UNOY, another promising model of a pooled fund designed to support local peace building by reducing bureaucratic requirements and improving accessibility. Young people have wide ranging capacities and unique needs. I don't need to tell you all that, but they often get lost between programming for children and adults. Especially in humanitarian action, they are often perceived as beneficiaries. And in some instances, peace building projects tend to focus more on youth engaged in violent activities rather than peace building efforts, which are more proactive and sustainable. Thus far, YPS agenda has served not only as a guide for UN entities, member states, organizations, and civil society, but it's also an important invest instrument in the empowerment and mobilization of young peace builders around the world. In order to increase support and investment for the effective implementation, um, we need to highlight the, effect, the importance of youth participation. Currently, there's also limited Im information on the impact of the adoption of the YPS agendas since 2015, both on youth mobilization for peace and global policymaking. 
As I mentioned before, effective implementation requires greater investment and recognition of and support for diverse young people's meaningful participation and leadership in decision-making on peace, security, and humanitarian action at all levels. This includes the deliberations at the Security Council where policymakers can set global precedents for meaningful engagement at national and local levels. The Civil Society Working Group on Youth, Peace and Security was born out of a desire by civil society and youth-led organizations to conduct collective advocacy and seize on strategic opportunities to advance the agenda. The Working Group is co-chaired by the Global Network of Women Peace Builders and the United Network of Young Peace Builders, UNOY, uh, with the support of a steering committee and was also launched by them and my alma mater, the New York University Center for Global Affairs on 14th December, 2021. The working group brings together 147 civil society and youth led organizations and networks from 74 countries working to advocate for, for effective youth implementation of the YPS agenda within the UN system, particularly the Security Council. The working group aims to improve the coordination and collaboration between civil society and youth net networks that advocate for effective implementation of YPS resolutions to strengthen the impact of advocacy within UNSC member states. It will also create a platform for sustained communication, coordination, and partnerships between the UN Security Council, Champions of Youth, Friends of YPS, global policymakers, civil society, and other youth-led networks. In the true spirit of the partnerships pillar of 2020, 2250, the working group will increase opportunities for decision makers within the Security Council and global policymakers more broadly to hear directly from the young people who are organizing in their communities and to make their voices heard, helping make the world a safer and more inclusive place. Finally, promoting synergies between the YPS and the Women, Peace and Security agendas is also key for more inclusive peace building that addresses the multiple layers of discrimination, marginaliz marginalization, and exclusion experienced by young women, LGBTQIA persons, and other gender and sexual minorities. Both agendas address the violence of exclusion and emphasize the importance of preventing conflict and prioritizing disarmament through sustainable and inclusive peace building. The working group will advocate for gender responsive YPS implementation and empower young women and LGBTQIA plus youth from conflict and crisis affected communities to access global policy making spaces. For additional details on the working group and the work that GNWP does on YPS, please feel free to reach out to me or to our director for Asia, Europe and Humanitarian Action, Malika Ayer. Thank you so much for your time.